Hmm? I was like, yeah. For, for no, no, he didn't hear you. He can hear us now, though. So. So, you guys now have the most terrifying 15 minutes of my week. Right now, I have no idea who any of you are. I don't know anything about you. I know you're college students, and that's it. I'm not just the high voltage guy here, the president and founder of the company, which means I am, on paper, the president and founder of a National Science Institute. That and the buck will get you short here. But what that means is everything that happens in this building is ultimately my responsibility. Also at this moment, you'll notice, you have me on live television. That broadcasts IPTV out to the world. There's over 200 cameras in this building, and they feed the internet. The internet is watching. They can see and hear everything I say. There's a microphone right up there. And they are judgmental bitches. And this is, have any of you ever read a YouTube comment? <laughs> it's like that. Also, we have Batman over here holding a vlog camera, and that goes out also unedited. I'm on TV. And will be published tonight and go live to the internet tomorrow. So everything I say right now is recorded forever and goes out to anybody on Earth with an internet connection. And I have no idea who you are. You get to ask me absolutely anything you want. There are no rules to this. I've even gotten boxes of briefs. <laughs> the reason for this is really simple. There's 2,200 nonprofit organizations in the city of Grand Rapids. 2,200 nonprofits. All of them are monitored and tracked by GuideStar. GuideStar is the big, giant monster of the nonprofit world. They're like consumer reports with teeth. Out of 2,200 nonprofits in the city of Grand Rapids, there are exactly three that hold a GuideStar platinum rating for accountability and transparency. And we're one of them. Everything in this building happens on camera. There are no secrets. I do this because really oddball, crazy ass, outdated grandpa concepts like accountability, transparency, logic, reason, common sense, critical thinking. Turns out those actually mean things. And somebody has to stand up and do it. So we do. You are an uncurated audience. You could have agendas. You could have tuned into any one of the thousands of Geek Group videos where I have done this every single week for years. And you could sit at home and write up the most horrible, terrifying questions imaginable and get to ask them to me in front of a live audience and on live television. Imagine how the world would change if the president of every nonprofit did exactly what I'm doing right now. It takes no time, it costs no money, and it has a profound impact on teaching people that critical thinking works and that it's important to ask questions and demand evidence of people in positions of power. So what do you want to do? Go. What do you do in case of an emergency? What kind of emergency? Like what if you just blow something up? Like literally. Like accidentally blow something up? Yeah. Um, we have a book this thick of policies and procedures. Um, there's two answers to that. The professional answer is we have a book of standard operating procedures and the entire staff has been trained in them, which they have, and when shit goes sideways, we know what to do. Different people here have different skill sets. If you're bleeding, me or Amy tend to be the people to go to because we have the most knowledge of emergency medicine. If you've set the room on fire, we have fire protocols, stuff like that. We have the evacuation policy, all that. The other side to that answer, which is the side that you don't normally hear from somebody who's sitting up here saying, Whoa, we have a comprehensive set of policies. And understand, my insurance agent watches, watches this. We have five different insurance companies. They all watch the blog and laugh like hell. The other side to that is we've made enough mistakes in doing this for 22 years. We've set enough rooms on fire. We've been hurt. We've blown shit up accidentally that we've gotten really good at knowing exactly what to do. And if you work in this building, because for the staff here, this is a pressure cooker. It's nonstop, high stress, all day, every day. Though, this is such a high stress job for the people here that we actually have a term called AFO, where the weather's nice, it's like a Tuesday, and we don't have anything booked that day, and we have one of those rare days where there's nothing heavy going on. 
we'll take a couple hours, grab a few boats, go down to the river and just screw off for the afternoon because the staff need that release. But you get there because we've made all the mistakes. In 22 years, we've had one member get hurt bad enough to have to go to the emergency room. She needed a couple stitches. Um, the reason she got hurt was she was profoundly stupid. Um, we've had, it's true. I mean, there, you try to be nice. She's a little old lady, but she was really dumb. Okay. You don't get to be really stupid with a table saw and not have that end in stitches. Stupid hurts. Welcome to the real world. Um, we've had one staff member get hurt. We had a volunteer, and that wasn't stupid. That was just bad luck. He's tougher than I am. He damn he he cut himself on the arm. A cut that was that long, that deep, and that wide. And if it happened to my arm, I'd have lost the arm. The only reason he still has an arm is because he looks like a sofa with feet. And dude is huge. Dude came in here, like what? Two months ago, maybe? Yeah. Came in here and was like, I just lost 150 pounds. And I was like, holy shit, you did. And you're still fat. And just, <laughs> he went from like a sofa down to an easy chair. But, and, but you know, cool, that's how cute. And he's a sweet kid. But if that happened to me, I'd lost the arm. And 22 years, that's the worst we've ever had. So we're prepared for that. It'll happen again. If you do this long enough, you're going to get hurt. I've been bit. I play with high voltage. I've been bit. I've been knocked on my ass. And there's video of it. And the entire internet has made fun of me for this. But that's important. Because when you watch television, when you watch anything on television, it's Half an hour long, we, hey, look, and, and it worked, and, and we win, and yay. What you don't see is, shit. What you don't see is the screw-ups. It isn't all eureka moments. It never is. Science is not A to Z. It's at the price of Bitcoin. It's all over the place. And that's important to teach people. It's important to teach people we make mistakes every day. I screw up all the time. I'm not a god. I'm a smart guy. I'm not a god. And it's important to have an environment where you balance out, you can make mistakes, you can do the crazy thing, you can take the chances. You won't die doing that, probably, we're here to save your ass, but we will mock you for it. Because it's not everybody's precious. You're not. We're all idiots. Next question. Who's your next frontier? I mean, if, if, a donor, if a donor came to you and said, I've got a quarter of a million dollars to for you to invest in anything that you want in this building. A quarter million dollars in this building right now? Yeah. Payroll. <laughs> <laughs> and not for me. I'm the last person to get paid. Um, that gentleman right there, okay, does more work in a given day than half of you put together. He's the first one in, he's the last one out, he works his ass off. I make less money than the person who manages the Burger King up the street. And he makes less than I, and I have a problem with that, because he's earned it. You don't get rich from hard work. That's not the secret to it. If it was done that way, and it was done fairly, then half of South Africa would be billionaires right now. Okay, it doesn't, it, it's, well, if you work hard, no, it's not, you have to be smart, you have to be clever. And you have to work your ass off. So your initial reaction was Bitcoin. Can you go that direction? Oh, you were asking me about, like, the next frontier. Yeah, Bitcoin, right now. Absolutely. Um, how many of you know what Bitcoin is? Raise your hand if you actually know what Bitcoin is. We got one guy. Okay. What's Bitcoin? Basically, uh, cryptocurrencies? Yes, do better. So it's just a Litecoin's cryptocurrency, Ethereum's cryptocurrency. What's Bitcoin? Nobody knows this, that's why I asked him this. Everybody thinks they know what it is, nobody does. It's kind of like the clip of finance. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just take a moment and let that sink in. There you go. All right. <laughs> Bitcoin is more than just money. Bitcoin is to money what email is to the postal service. She loves me, right? <laughs> She's like, he's a horrible man. I can't stop watching. It's a traitor. <laughs> Bitcoin is based on the blockchain technology. Some dude, some nerd, like one of you, like one of us, some nerd, somewhere, decided. Just for kicks, I'm going to solve the Byzantine Hello? general's problem, which was like this giant math yeah. problem. And he did. Okay. And it turns out this math problem right. had a practical application. Are you shooting video of me right now? No. Okay. 
Because if you are, that's okay. If you're shooting okay. a vertical video, I'm going to mock you. Okay. Stills are fine. Okay. <laughs> Bitcoin is the way to right now subvert the government in a way that we can all get away with. Okay. Bitcoin allows me to send any of you any amount of money anywhere in the world instantly outside of a central right. bank, outside of a fiat currency, outside of the control of any okay. government, and to do it in a way that cannot, absolutely cannot be counterfeit. That, that, that's fine. You can, can give steal me Bitcoin, number? you can rob the bank, but you can't counterfeit it, which is hilarious because you can make new ones in your house legally. Good luck doing that, but in theory you can. Bitcoin is based on the blockchain. The blockchain is fundamentally a triple ledger accounting system on the public. I can send you any amount of money I want. And you know it's secure, and I know it's secure, and we know it's safe. And I can't do a chargeback, like you can do with credit cards. You can buy a thing, get your thing, do a chargeback. That's credit card fraud. Credit card fraud is a housing Already, thank you. dollar a year industry right now. It doesn't happen in Bitcoin. You can't. Because everybody knows everything. Accountability and transparency, that's why I like Bitcoin. Nobody knows who him or I are on the Bitcoin network, but if I, right now, send him a dollar in Bitcoin, everybody on the Bitcoin network knows that my address sent him a dollar. And they can all verify that. In fact, it depends on the fact that other people verify that. That's what miners do. And here's the part that you care about, because I can sit here and talk about crypto theory for an hour and ten minutes and every eye in the room is going to glaze over. But this is the part you care about. In 2010, how many of you remember 2010? Okay, I'm not going for ancient history here. Those of you that don't, you've got the good drugs and I want to see you later. <laughs> for all of you who were not high and remember 2010, if in 2010 you had taken 10 bucks, that's it, 10 bucks, you can count that high without having to take off your shoes. If you bought 10 bucks in Bitcoin in 2010, at this moment, right now, you would have $1.2 million. Any questions? How would you like to have a million dollars and not actually have to go and do all that much for it? Buy Bitcoin. It's going on. The problem with buying Bitcoin is really simple. Bitcoin is anonymous. It exists outside of government control. However, the places that sell it do not. You can go to like Coinbase and buy Bitcoin. But to buy Bitcoin and Coinbase, they want a copy of your driver's license, front and back, and your address, and your email, and your cell phone number. And, and, and they're a step away from like a semen sample at this point. <laughs> If you want to go on another site called Gemini, they want your passport. How many of you even have a passport? Okay, yeah. See. So much for the government not knowing where your money comes from. And if you have a million dollars sitting in a wallet, the IRS would very much like to know that you have a million dollars sitting in your wallet. So the way to get around that is to buy it anonymously. You can do this by buying it off of you down the street. Good luck on that. Those dudes are kind of hard to come by, but there's more every day. Or you can come to the Geek Group. And you can buy Bitcoins at our ATM, absolutely not. Which is why the Geek Group has the first Bitcoin ATM in the city of Grand Rapids. Wrong. <laughs> so that's the basics of Bitcoin. For more, there's a lot to read online and read it. But this is this is one of those emerging technologies that you really need to know about. Because nobody knows about it yet, except people who have lots and lots of money, and they're making lots and lots of money with it, and why the hell not get a piece of that pie? Next question. Give me a hard one, surprise me. There are no rules to this. I've even gotten boxes of brutes. Go. So what happened when the uh, high voltage line got shut down? At your school, the high school you all went to, when you walk in the front door, there's a big display case with all your awards in it, right? <laughs> big trophies. Every school's got them. At ours, we put that case. That's where if you get something in that case, you had a bad day. You don't want anything in the case thing. Okay. This. Pick it up. It's heavier than you think it is. You know what it is? Give you a hint. The only thing that's a little harder than that is tiny. You're holding a piece of fluorinated tungsten carbide. Also, it's radioactive. Um, it's not that radioactive. <laughs> if you ate a banana today, you got more radiation than you're getting. But that is a piece of fluorinated tungsten carbide. This, and if anybody wants to see it, raise your hand, I'll pass it over. But this is a piece of tungsten carbide. It's hard as a nail. It's really, really hard to make it melt. You can see the tip of it is actually melting. This is the flying electrode from a synchronized rotary spark cap. 
There was a little grub screw that held it in place. Little tiny screw. That little tiny screw. That one little tiny screw. There's a quarter inch too loose, or a quarter turn too loose. That's it. So this electrode, which is on the periphery of a 12 inch disc spinning at 3,600 RPM, left. It came into contact while spinning at 3,600 RPM. It came into contact with a stationary electrode, which did not want to move. And it broke. And this was slightly hotter than the surface of the sun when it left. And flew into what was at the time the largest MMC capacitor array built in the history of mankind. <laughs> which happened to be made out of polypropylene, which I learned the day after that burns at 1,200 degrees. I know this because the aluminum frame of the MMC capacitor array, got, the room got so hot the aluminum frame melted into a puddle. There's a very important thing in the world to understand. Lawyers suck. And lawyers are the reason why there's a hell of a big difference between something being fire resistant and fire retardant. Fire resistant means it's hard to get this to burn. Fire retardant means this won't burn. Our door to the glass containment room was made out of fire resistant material, not the fire retardant material as we had been led to believe. So it caught on fire and it burned a lot. It burned like hell. And it filled the entire room in a thick, greasy, black, oily smoke. If you've ever had to play with toner, okay, just take a 50 gallon bucket of toner, put a grenade in the middle, and walk away. That's what happened to our building. It set the room on fire. It destroyed the giant 20-foot Tesla coil. It destroyed everything in the room. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in equipment. Stuff that we've been working on for 15 years. And you start over. You just you start. The fire got so hot, the concrete roof of the blast containment room peeled up. It didn't blast up. It wasn't an explosion. It was fire. But it got so hot that it peeled the concrete up. That's bad. I ain't no architect, but I know that's bad. <laughs> so the fire department came. And of course, we now, normally, in a normal business, when something happens like that, there's a little news article about it, okay, and there's like three inches and one column of a new, oh, there's a fire paper, uh, and it goes away, and nobody thinks about it, you might notice some caution paper on the building for a couple of years. What happened here, the first thing we did was grab the camera. Because it doesn't matter who screwed up. It doesn't matter how it happened, it matters that it happened, and our screw-ups happened in full view. So there's blog video. Of that day, you can find it. It's January 2nd? January 2nd, 2014? What year was the fire? 14. 14, I think, yeah. We opened the building to the public on January 1st, and January 2nd, I said, we're in that fire. <laughs> yeah. That's not my life. <laughs> and we shut the high voltage light like, down, done, for like a year and a half, two years. We're just getting back into this one. And you start over. But we do this because it's important for me to teach guys like you that shit happens and it's okay to make mistakes. And you fall off the horse, you get back up. It isn't perfect every time. We screw up. And I keep that because that's why. That I earned that. And it goes right up there in the cabinet, in full view of the world, every day. And I've had people travel here from Belgium to touch this. Like, oh yeah. That is that heavy. So, here's the thing I want to teach you. How many of you are business students, entrepreneurs? Okay, cool. You're going to like this. How many of you have been here before and seen this demo? Really? None of you have ever been here before and seen this demo? Oh, that's easy. All right. Now, you've been taught your whole life that everybody is unique, everybody is special, no two people are the same, everybody is unpredictable. That is absolute bullshit, and I'm going to prove it right now. Okay. I am going to do the most dangerous, stupid thing that anybody standing in front of a room full of people they don't know can possibly do. I am going to speak about all of you in a wild generalization, and I'm going to do it twice, and if I get it wrong, it's going to cost me a couple bucks, because in my pocket right now, I have... This is why the all business students smile. They're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> Alright. I got 20 bucks right now that says none of you know what this is. Gross generalization. There's no possible, you shut up. There's no possible way I could know if you would know what this is or not. 
But I will bet 20 bucks that none of you know what this is. I will even give you an opportunity to make a guess. Does anybody want to try a shot? If you get it right, you win 20 bucks. If you can tell me what this is. And this isn't some weird NASA shit. This is something all of you are very familiar with. Every one of you. In fact, your life would suck it up. All right. Music? Huh? Play music? No. Is it some sort of diaphragm? Is it some sort of diaphragm? You have to do better than that. No. You can't use this sugar cream. All right. Don't laugh at that terrible joke! God! All right. So, there was standardization one. None of you know what this is. Now here's where it gets cool, because this is where we get to really study the inner depths of human nature. You ready? Generalization one. None of you know what that is. Generalization two. You want to, don't you? Because that's how people work. Right now, at this moment, you have something awesome. You have a sincere and passionate desire to figure shit out. That's how you make your first million. Anybody want to guess what this is? What? Is it your mirror? Is it what? Is it your mirror in your car? No. How big are the mirrors in your car? No, I mean like on the outside. Like your, your mirror on the outside. No. Well, it's not even a lung. Huh? Well, it's like a lung. I, I regularly get people to ask if it's an iron lung. It is not. If I want to take guess, you get it right in 20 bucks. Three more guesses. Go. Go. No. Two more. Go. Quick! Damn it, there's money at stake! 20 bucks! Every one of you has one of these. Yeah. You've seen thousands of them. Your life would suck without it. And it makes your life suck at the same time. Go! Huh? No! One more, go! Come on, somebody be creative. No, but you were the closest. This! is the gas meter inside your house. And this is the safest $20 bill in America. <laughs> because it's one of those stupid technologies that nobody ever thinks about. It's like aglets. How many people know what an aglet is? Okay, you are all turbo nerds. What's an aglet? It's the woman with shoes. See, it's the woman with shoes like that. You would know that. You don't even have any laces. It's like jail over here. No laces. <laughs> You don't have to be the person that invents the next cell phone that cures cancer. Be the dude that invents the next aglet. It's good enough. I want to make a tenth of a penny a piece on every aglet that gets sold by Nike. You know what my ultimate dream job is? Well, there's that. I accidentally got a degree in printing and graphic arts. I signed up for media production, they screwed up putting me in printing, and the teacher was awesome, and I stuck it out and liked it a lot. And I learned something. I learned what the ultimate dream job is. I want to be the guy who owns the company that prints the wrappers for Wonder Bread. Best job in the world! But he sells a bajillion of them. And people buy it, and two days later throw it away, and they need another one. I want to be the guy that prints Wonder Bread wrappers. This is a great job. Nobody ever thinks about this guy. He has no stress. He's never going to end up in the papers. He has a completely forgettable life. And he has more money than God. This is a good job. I like this job. Be that guy. Because you can. You don't have to be a super genius. You don't have to invent some radical new thing. The plastic bag already invented. Flexo printing had already been invented. He put the two together. He got the job. He went out there. He got on his ass. He got the cake. Every day, you wake up, and while you're eating your breakfast, you check your email. You watch people on a computer screen doing cool shit. This is why Reddit exists. Right? Everybody does this. This is the place where you can come and be the person on the screen. That's the point. You can come here and play with giant robots. And you don't have to come here and play with giant robots because you want to get a degree in robotics engineering. You can come here and play with giant robots because robots are cool. That's it. That, there, there is no practical, just robots are cool. And I do that. I went through a lot of work to get the robot so that you can play with it. Because right now, it's 2017. The Bureau of Labor Statistics released a report a couple months ago. It said 50% of the types of jobs, not 50% of the jobs, 50% of the types of jobs that exist today will not physically exist in 2030. 
Well, 2030 is a magical year. Because a person who's a kindergartner today graduates high school in 2030. So we're training people today for jobs that won't exist when they graduate high school. You guys have an advantage. You're grown-ups now. You have the ability to improvise, adapt, and overcome. You have the ability to build businesses that are going to exist now. You have the ability to get into things now, like Bitcoin, that today are nothing. It's trivial. In 1991, email was nothing. It's trivial. Not long ago, okay, and he remembers it, so do you, okay, there was a time when on the cover of Time magazine, they said, Google is going to go public. It's going to cost 50 bucks a share. And it says, is Google worth 50 bucks a share? And a lot of people went, not really. Fuck. <laughs> Take a look at what Google sells for today. I'm sure it's split a few times. Look around at what's emerging and then figure out what you can do to jump on it. You don't have to invent something, you just have to make it better. Who invented the steam engine? I will give you 20 bucks if you give this right. Who invented the steam engine? Really? Really? We, you're an engineer! For God's sake! Really? What's the unit of power? Okay, who invented the steam engine? You're wrong. <laughs> but everybody thinks he did. Everybody thinks James Watt invented the steam engine. He didn't. James Watt was no less than the sixth person to invent the steam engine. The first, by the way, was Harold. He was a Greek about, like, back with Jesus. Okay? We're going back that far. James Watt was a janitor in a school, really. And they had the Newcomen steam engine. He was the fifth, by the way. They had the Newcomen mind-pumping steam engine there. And James Watt, who didn't know shit about steam engines, had probably never seen one, had a little model steam engine on a shelf in high school there. And it broke. It didn't work. And the science teacher came out and said, can you please fix this? And he's like, all right. So he takes the whole thing apart. He puts the whole thing back together again. It works. It works better than it ever has. And he has a whole pile of real important like your shit left over. So he threw that away. It became the Watt engine, which was way more efficient than the Newcomen engine. Be the guy. You can. And for all of you entrepreneur students, I want one thing to keep you up tonight. You just toured a place, you just came in and saw all our secret sauce, where there are more tools that you can use today than Home Depot on Alpine has for sale. And you can use all of them. And it's 20 bucks a month. That's less than you spent on Taco Bell this month. Okay. Work it out. You eat fast food like once a week, it's about five bucks. Guess what? You spend less money here. So you have all the tools. You don't have to know how to use them. We will teach you how to use any tool in this building. So the only thing at this point, standing between you where you are now and you running your own company, is whatever bullshit excuse you keep telling yourself, because I just got rid of all the other ones. You have the tools, you have the space, you have the resources, you can afford it as a broke college student. There are no more excuses. You can do this now, or you can spend the rest of your life telling somebody else, you know, hi boss, how you doing? and watching the world on a TV screen. It's your call. Any questions? Cool, thank you. Now go do something for God's sake. <laughs>